Yo, Shortbox Nation, this is Botter, and I'm here to tell you right now that con season starts early this year with the return of Northeast Florida's premier anime, comic book, and sci-fi event, Collective Con. That's right, Northeast Florida's largest pop culture convention returns for its 10th year on March 8th through the 10th at the Prime Osborne Center in Jacksonville, Florida. 10 years of Collective Con, they're pulling all the stops out to make sure this is a can't-miss event. And the guest list they got going, don't even get me started on the guest list. I mean, they've got A-list celebrity guests and voice actors from some of your favorite movies, anime, and video games like Elijah Wood and Sean Ashton, Ray Park, Trisha Helfer, Ross Marquin, Max Middleman, and bo herself would be there, Katie Sackhoff. Tell me what other convention is giving you the opportunity to meet Frodo and Sam from Lord of the Rings, Darth Maul, and One Punch Man all under the same roof. Only at Collective Con. And if you're looking to get some of your favorite comics signed, or if you want to get an original sketch from some of the best comic artists in the world, well, you're in luck because there'll be plenty of comic and creator guests there, like DC comic artist extraordinaire Clay Mann, Harvey Award nominated illustrator John Taylor Christopher, Marvel and DC cover artist Chris Stevens, and acclaimed Star Wars author Timothy Zahn. They'll all be at Collective Con this year. And if you're looking to bring the family or if you want to make a weekend out of it, you're in luck because there'll be so much going on at CollectiveCon that weekend in the form of vendors, fan panels, video game tournaments, cosplay contests, after parties, and a bunch of fan events. You can purchase single and three-day weekend passes now using the link in this episode's show notes or by going to CollectiveCon.com to book your tickets and hotel. Buy your tickets now, and I'll see you at CollectiveCon, March 8th through the 10th. Now let's start the show. We don't have to stay here. We could go wherever we No, we can't. This is our home. Are you sure? Oh, don't worry, darling. I have everything under control. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Short Box Podcast, Season 6. Short Box Podcast was recorded before a live internet audience. Yeah, I think we should go ahead and start. Yo, so, cheers to you, my friend. Cheers to you. Yo, we back at it. We, yo, we are back like, at yo, it. Like, yo, listen, who's that face I see? Mine? Yo, me? You. Oh, First. yeah, that's me. That's me. Hell yeah. Yo, it's good to have you finally back, man. Like, yeah, for real. Last time we did this was like in, at Walt House. Yeah, which wasn't really that long. Yeah, like but does it feel like a <laughs> lifetime ago, though? Dude, I, in this... Am I too loud? No, no, you're good. You're All right, good. cool. I feel like, um, yeah, I, I've kind of lost track of time. I feel like one day equates out to like a week in pandemic time. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like you got to start, yeah, you gotta start talking like about that, like, like that's pandemic time. Yeah, pandemic time. Yes, yeah, it's, it's 2 p.m. PT. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's pandemic time. A.m. P.M. and PT. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely been... Um, yeah, I, I can see. I can see why why you'd say that. But it's definitely been a minute since you've been back in the short box studio with me. Yeah, been a minute um, since I sit in this chair. Well, you don't want to sit in Ashley's, so... Very true. Yeah, but, but you know oh, what? I, I see. I, I got to switch it up. Yeah, yeah, you switch I it gotta up. I got to see where Ed sits and see what <laughs> yeah. it's all you gotta, about. You got to feel his groove. Yo, like, I'm always I looking at the this. pictures. I'm always it. peeping the pictures, and I'm like, what are these motherfuckers talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Laughing, <laughs> having a good time. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> Well, look, man, I- I'm glad that you are riding shotgun for the special episode. I'm definitely um, glad that you ran out of people to have as your co-host <laughs> and guest. I'm so lucky to be here. I was like, all right, it's time to break in case of emergency. Hell yeah. Drew, come on the show. I need you. I'm so used to being a Torres at the end of the line. So when I'm at the end of this line, I'm like, hell yeah. My this, time is good. this is the line I've been waiting. I'm waiting. looking at Williams like, you going? They're like, nah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid, but look, man, I appreciate you coming through, riding shotgun for this very special um, short box uh, episode, little bonus, little quick strike type episode. I wanted to get on the mic to talk about Scarlet, which I'm sorry, Wandavision, uh, episode four. I feel like it, it was too big of a, an event and too big of a moment and such a like crazy episode for us to not dedicate an episode on. And there's the so reason, many things we can talk about for sure, for sure. And the, and the main reason that you know it, it, this wouldn't have just gone on a regular weekly episode is because this week uh, we're taking a detour from our normal kind of uh, um, you know roundtable group chats, and we've got a special interview with a an awesome journalist and an SAS for the the New York Magazine. He's named Abraham Reisman. He's wrote a um, a biography on Stan Lee, true believer, the rise and fall of Stan Lee. Like I said, that interview will come out this week. That being said, let's jump into why, you know, we, we got together. 
Um, and that's the new episode of WandaVision. Episode four dropped on Friday. Matthew Stinson uh, sent an email um, on Sunday, and it arrived right after we recorded. And it really got me thinking about, like, you know, getting an episode four, episode four together, you know. So I'm going to read uh, Matthew Stinson's email that he sent. Uh, it was titled WandaVision Dragging. He writes, short box, writing in to defend WandaVision, a little from y'all's last week episode. I wrote this email once already, but decided to wait until episode four dropped and rewrite it. So glad I did. I think episode four should have cleaned up a lot of the problems y'all had with the story so far. I personally have loved the show from the start and was surprised that the short box crew thought it was dragging. To me, WandaVision has been the fruit striped gum of the MCU, the equivalent of a quickie before work, and hasn't felt like dragging at all, but the opposite. Seems the main problem is the seven-day wait between episodes. That's what's dragging. That's a really good point. If uh, that's what's dragging, if this all dropped at once, I don't think anyone would call this show slow. Also, if you minus the intros, commercials, and end credits, each episode is only 20, 25 minutes, so we're barely into an hour and a half of what is basically a three-hour movie. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Mad Attack. Yo, shout-outs. First of all, shout-outs to Matthew Stenson for an awesome fucking email. Well-written. Well-written. Good points. Um, and to catch you up, the I think last episode... Um, I had asked Ashley what she thought about WandaVision because we I hadn't talked with Cesar Ed and Ashley about it um since we recorded, you know, the episode of Walt. I get it. You have you have friends outside of me and Walt. Yo, for sure. Yeah, you know, I get it. Very wide network. Yeah, yeah. Very a lot of them. Yeah, really yeah. good people. Maybe you guys do even do a podcast. I, definitely I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh Ashley brought up the point of she felt like it was really slow. Up to yeah. that point, it was up to episode three. And um and and I agreed. Why? I think because not much happens and you're thrown into it in the middle of some shit, you know? But, like, you're, are you saying that, like, I don't understand why And I'm speaking for the... Resp- I'm trying to speak from the perspective of, like, someone who would think it's it was dragging. What's crazy well, to I me... Guess that well, here's the thing. What's crazy to me is the fact that a casual fan, like, a casual person would watch this and try to, like, understand it. In the sense of, like, yo, that would suck. If you're, like, this is the first introduction to anything Marvel, that would definitely suck. But let's just assume that the person that's, like, excited to watch it knows everything that's going on with WandaVision. Dude, I'm, t- I'm telling you, when... When uh, I was prepping for our episode of Walt, and I was just kind of researching WandaVision, like you know the, the the headlines and the stories about it, like what was what are some of the things they've been talking about in like interviews, it made me realize one, I wasn't excited for WandaVision until I had to prep for the um the episode and it was coming out. I, I can understand. I think that. I think I, I think uh, like one or two days prior is when the excitement got like real for me. Yeah, I I can respect that. Well, because dude, when they announced everything. They announced a like a like a plethora of stuff, and then there was WandaVision. So it's, yeah. it's in terms of like excitability, and, and, and there was stuff out there that we were like, no, 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 cats. Are, like when they were like Winter Soldier and Captain Falcon, you're like <laughs> looking like you're looking left, right. You're like, yo, but, that's the yeah. one because because it, it looks like it looks and and kind of like it looks like it would feel how the other MCUs feel, yeah. like very action packed, like you know, witty, like. It, it made sense, like you know that that was like, oh, that looks just like the other MCU stuff. Wandavision was stuck out like a sore thumb, yeah. And I think that's why it's so good right now, you know. Can, can, <laughs> like, can I, can I make a like a an observation? Yeah. The reason why is like Captain Falcon and and uh, Winter Soldier, we got a lot of like buddy cop of just like mm-hmm. their comedy on screen. Yeah, it's that was really good. Yeah, it's definitely good. Wanda, Wanda, and Vision, not so much. Like it was definitely out there. And um, we only got fragments of the relationships. At one point, we got their meeting. At yep. another point, we got them both fighting each other. Yep. Civil War. And then later on, we got them like kind of together. But Vision gets fucked up. And he's bleeding to death. And then like later on, she has to like kill her boyfriend. Yeah. And so I- not much time is like for that mm-hmm. relationship to bleed and grow. And I don't think they make the same connection with you. Like... The other characters, and and if we're just comparing them to like um uh, uh Bucky and Falcon, yeah, you you kind of felt like you, you were more uh you found them more relatable. Like they got to you because they were funny. Um, Wanda and Vision, to me, at least for me, um, they were just not. You know, I I could care less. I was yeah. like, yeah, they're kind of. But dry. the only reason why we had any dry. type of respect on it is because we knew as yep. Marvel yep. fans yep. that yo know, these two are together. For sure. The for one, sure. the one, and like, let's just talk about relationships. <laughs> I, and we'll get back to WandaVision, yeah, but, yeah, you yeah. know, like, I don't get to hang out here. Another relationship we can talk about that I was invested in the MCU. 
Hulk and Black Widow. Me too. They that was definitely couple. a relationship that when they were like going back and forth, like I was definitely invested and I was like, yo, this is actually pretty good. And then at the same point, they ended their relationship. They killed my girl and then Bruce Banner never got to say goodbye. Mm. Like he definitely was one of the ones that felt it. Is this coming from a personal place? This sounds like. No, it's definitely like a, from a, <laughs> it's coming from a rewatch I and I was just like, like I, 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 I rewatched a lot of these MCU movies after watching WandaVision, and I'm like, man. How do they hold up? They all hold up really, really well. And a lot of movies that we kind of gave shit on, knowing what we know now on how they do stuff, these movies are great. Let's get serious for a minute, and I want to talk about Scarlet Witch Episode 4 titled We Interrupt This Program. Uh, just some credits for anyone that cares. Uh, it's directed by Matt Shackman, uh, written by Bobek uh, S. Farjani and Megan McDonald. Uh, we get some like new cameos too, like some new uh, cameo stars in this. We got Tayona uh, Paris playing Monica Rambeau. Randall Park shows up as Jimmy Woo. Uh, Kat Dennings, who plays Dr. Darcy Lewis. And of course, Catherine Hahn. Um, she's credited as like a cameo too, Agatha. So I guess anytime she shows up. But we also get to meet um, the sword director, uh, Tyler Hayard, played by Josh Stamberg. And then a bunch of like sword agents as well. Were you were you excited about like Darcy showing up? Um, I was Actually, not I, excited, I, surprised. Yeah. Why surprise? Eh, she, eh, because surprised. I didn't know that she was going to be in this movie. So when they sure. saw her, I was like, here's the thing. I did one of those like memes where I'm like putting my hand yeah, over there. I'm like, like, hmm, I was like, I well played, Marvel. Well played. Way to like tie. She makes sense to be here. Oh, yeah. For sure. the, the way to tie, tie a character from the movies into a TV show besides the, all the other movie characters. But it's definitely like I was like, oh, okay. When I saw her, I was like, she's one of those investigative like type of things. I've, I'm very happy for it. Looks like she's doing really well for himself. She's Last time I saw now. her, she was assistant. Now she's a doctor. Come on, man. Killing it. She leveled up. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, so I was like, up. all right, maybe there's hope for me. But yeah. So so that, those are the cast. Um, and then, I mean, as far as like plot point goes, like if you were to describe this in a, in a few words, it's essentially like the, the introduction to every Marvel movie. It, it felt like it. But this episode basically is your answers and guidebook for what happened in episodes one, two, and three. Like yeah. all your questions about like the sitcom, uh, what timeline and what happened. What's up? With the, I feel like the the most the the question I've heard the most is about that motherfucking bee dude. Like the bee yeah, keeper. Like, what's going on? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> like that's the thing that's blown people's mind it. is like this beekeeper yeah. mystery. Um, but because I know you have the same problem. Like you tell people about the show, and they're asking you questions, and you're like, listen. Just watch it. I promise you, every question you ever think of, I kind of, I think I'm gonna start um, just telling people to go read the comics because that'll get people off your back. Because you know they won't read it, and they're like, "All right, man, sorry, my bad." But here's <laughs> like the, you put you a you curse on them. Anybody like, read something, they're gonna. Look it's like at they, you like, put a curse on them. They're like, "Whoa, bro! Whoa, whoa. I got kids. Yo, like, you want me to read? <laughs> and I got kids." Yeah. So this episode kind of answers a lot of questions that people were having in the prior ones, and it's um, told in the past. So we find that, you know, uh, Monica and Rambo, it starts off with Monica and Rambo waking up in the hospital, like regenerating because she was a you know a victim of the, what do they call it? The, the blipping? The blip. The blip. That's kind of weird. I like the snap better. Not many people who were there to listen to the snap. True. They just it's blip. an inside thing? Like, you know, Damn, it's an inside, it's an inside joke. Thing. Like it's 10 an inside people joke know between about the Iron snap. Man and Captain yeah. America. They're just like, yo. <laughs> the rest of y'all call it the blip? Everybody calls it a blip. Like, yo, y'all call it a blip? Like, now we call it a snap, bro. Why y'all call it a snap? Because we were there here. There's no blip, bro. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Thanos goes, snap, and then everybody dies. Yeah, not blip. <laughs> not blip. He didn't say yeah. blip. But, I mean, we, we learned, like, more about Monica Rambeau's past, like, her association with S.W.O.R.D., how S.W.O.R.D. got involved with this. And, um, like I said, it, it kind of explains why uh, we were watching a sitcom for those first three episodes. So do you think that do you think that it, it, this was the episode to, to give it that momentum that it needed to, quote-unquote, like, not be dragging? For fuck sure, yeah. Because they do a really good job of catching you up of everything that's going on. Yo, this is Botter. Sorry for interrupting this episode, but I'll keep it brief. I wanted to let you know about a massive sale we have going on over at the Short Box Store on all of our merchandise and apparel. That's theshortboxstore.bigcartel.com. You can now save 20% off your entire order using the discount code YO, Y-O-O. So if you've been waiting for the right time to finally buy that gauntlet snapback, or if you ever wanted to buy any of the shirts you see me wear on the podcast, well, now's your chance to get them for a steal. We still have a few sizes left of everything, 
thing, but they won't last long. And once they're gone, they are gone. And then I mentioned that all of our apparel is screen printed on high quality material. None of that heat transfer or direct to garment stuff. Our shirts are some of the most comfortable ones you'll ever wear. And the hats look even better in person. So wear your support for the Short Box Nation proudly, knowing that you're going to look damn good doing it. Get to theshortboxstore.bigcartel.com as soon as you can. And don't forget to use that discount code YO, Y-O-O, to save 20% off your entire order. All of this information can be found in this episode's show notes if you want to get there faster. Thanks for not pressing fast forward. Now back to the show. Yeah. And and how crazy was that opening scene? Like when Monica is like kind of regenerating or, or coming back together and she's waking up in the hospital and it's chaos. I dude, I, I gotta call my wife. I dude, was like, good for him. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, that's yeah. yeah. But like, that was a cool perspective because it, it. I felt like they captured like that that sense of like what the fuck is going on, um, really well because I think they they, the first time that we kind of see like the return or like a, the the blip kind of you know uh, um, unhappening was in Far From Home, where all those kids... It was, like, showing, like, different scenes where, like, people were coming back, yeah, yeah. too. Yeah, you got it in, like, a, just, like, like a Kind of a comedy, little, yeah, like, yeah, strike, comedy like hey, here's like, what it would look like if yeah. kids came back. They didn't give us play. the drama. They gave us the fun. Yo, for sure, the fun stuff. But, man, this one was just... Even though that was a fun experience, kind of, like, laughing at it, but this was cool that it did the opposite, where it's like, oh, man, what is going on? It's really intense in here. And then, like, to find out, like, um, Monica Rambeau's mom passed away... What what she said? Uh, three years ago, so two years after you left, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, after they it's actually like one year. They, they, yeah, yeah. It was like a one year apart, or something like that. But it's like, damn, off the rip, you feel bad for her. Like, not only did you come back and your world is like upside down, but you lost your mom too. And then she goes back to work to realize, oh damn, they took my parking spot for real. Come on, it's man. just like yo, hey, guess what? You're grounded. So yeah, not you're, you're like even in death, your mom's still telling you what to do. They did such a good job of making me kind of like um um feel like empathetic for her you know to yeah, like yeah. kind of resonate and connect with her that was like a good moment of um like just kind of easily giving you her backstory and making you feel like man i'm kind of attached like shit okay i kind of like her because prior to this i didn't really care i was like yo you're from the captain marvel movie i, I don't know i don't know how i feel about yeah, you yeah that know? movie wasn't all that good so i don't feel like you're gonna bleed over into this marvel universe yeah. and impress me but yeah this was kind of like for me i think refreshing in the sense that you got a lot of answers. And um, as someone that was like, you know, that I'm kind of aware of like where they're pulling this comic book stuff from. It was also reassuring. I think reassuring is the proper word I'm thinking of. It was reassuring because like, oh man, okay. I-, I wasn't going, like I wasn't off in my, my theory that, yo, Wanda kind of took over the city. Like what we're watching is her reality. It's it's not, you know, not not meant to be taken literal, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, yo, now nah, this was like a really reassuring episode. And to your point, it felt like okay, yeah, this is a, a property of the MCU. You know, it's got it's got a certain feel to it and like momentum and like certain notes they hit. Yeah, any origin Marvel t te- like any origin Marvel movie that's come out, it always starts with like Agent Coulson, and like Agent Wu to me is now the new Agent Coulson. Yeah. So huh. he's gonna be showing up like here and there, like kind of like making his like good jokes, and then like. All right, this is what's happening. Da, 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 da. Yeah, Jimmy Woo, like yo, Agent Jimmy Woo is so cool. <laughs> yeah, that um, um, I think that sword director was like, man, they must miss you in Quantico, and he was like, no, sir, softball season is over. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, he just said it so dry and whatnot. But the way he delivered it, I was like, yo, that, like I, I, I like him. He's got like really good one liners. Definitely, yeah. You're like, yo, I like this guy. You want to like yo? If he came and questioned you, you're like, I want to help this guy. Yeah, it's like I'll snitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's so friendly. Yeah, and they're like, yo, director, like you. Well, how do you get it? I don't know, director. <laughs> I just, I just That's a good impersonation. Yeah. Um. So I, I think we can both agree the the vision reveal at the end was a big moment. Like that was that was like a big like oh <laughs> like that's a double dude and, and they paused on it too. It's For like look minute, at it. They're like yo look look, look, look you're like what the no yo crazy. It felt like it felt like I was disrespecting yo. you know so I was desecrating um uh, I was like desecrating a grave or something. <laughs> you know that felt yo, so nasty. See a dead body. He looked dusty. Yo. Like yo if you blew too hard like pieces of him would like fall off. I was like here's the I remember like watching Endgame, not Endgame, Infinity War, going, mm. seeing his dead body and going, 
All right. Well, this I'm is good. too much. I was almost like, yo, like, yo, Marvel's wild. All right. Well, well, like, rest in peace, my friend. And then, like, Marvel's like, remember this? And I was like, no, <laughs> please. And they're like, nah, he's dead. You're like, fuck. This is crazy. So, uh, so I mean, I, I think we can agree then that that was probably the big, the biggest reveal of this episode. Uh, and they saved it at the end, and it, which made it even you know more like more of a punch. Besides that, what do you think were like two two? May, give me like two other big moments or takeaways from this episode. Takeaways, yeah, is when they established um, Monica Rambeau, where like she was definitely not a survivor of the blip, mm-hmm. and to see it from like from like a victim's perspective, like a victim of the blip's perspective. <laughs> Was like really cool. Like like I said, once again, that opening scene was was so dope. Definitely, the second scene to me, in my personal opinion, is when Monica Rambeau finally gets to the town and they're talking to the two cops, and he's mm-hmm. like, "Where are you from? Eastview." And he's like, "Well, he's like, I told your G man over here, there's no such thing as Westview." And, he and they're standing him, in front of a sign that says Westview. Westview, and they're like, "Yo, this doesn't <laughs> exist." And she's like, mm, "Okay," and then she sends the helicopter in there, and then all, everything happens according to plan. So I was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, that's a good one. I, I mean, there was some. No, no, there th- was a are, lot of really good reveals. Solid. Everything that show was just solidly made. So as the reveal was going on, the last three episodes made more sense because mm-hmm. you were getting a little bit more and more and more. Yeah, it's almost like knowing this, watching this episode. I would. I'm almost enticed to go watch episodes one, two, and three again just to catch like smaller details or like other clues because i feel like that there's probably other clues that that would have informed you outside of like what i feel like were the typical ones w- one of my favorite moments from this episode was when um i think his name was uh what's his name agent oh agent franklin when agent franklin the beekeeper dude when uh he ends up coming out from the other into the the um the world that or the town and he's in a beekeeper suit yeah and they show his kind of like perspective of Wanda and Vision in that moment, you know, because in episode one we saw, or episode one or two, I think it was two, with Wanda coming out in the streets, finding the beekeeper guy come out. Um, we saw it from their perspective, so it was kind of cool to like see it from his perspective oh, of, of what okay. happened, and and it's it and it's still so the way she delivered that. No, it was like. Yo, I felt like, yo, it just gave me like chills, like just to you see it again. You called your mom and was like, mom, I'm yeah. sorry that I ever Yo, you. it was like when your mom gives you the evil eye. Exactly. No. Oh, um, shit. I, so that was one of my favorite parts because. That's a scary word. For sure. No. Yo, and here's the thing. And you she delivered it pretty good. You don't see what happens to Agent Franklin. Like, Damn. What, she knocks, um, we see what, how Monica Rambeau gets out of the, uh, uh, the town. She gets like blasted out of the town, but you don't see what happens to Agent Franklin. So I'm wondering. Um, that's definitely one of my like yeah, outstanding questions. The, is where is so old beekeeper kind boy? For thinking of it, but what if they never answer it? <laughs> and I'm that annoying fan yeah, at conventions uh, with yeah. this dumb ass Anybody specific any annoying question. Yeah, what happened to the beekeeper? Get him the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he knows too much. He knows too much. Let me ask you your thoughts on, on this real quick. At the end of the episode. Monica Rambo, you know, she's she just got blasted out of, out of the town. She's laying on the grass. She looks like out of breath, but she manages to say it's all Wanda. It's all Wanda. Do you think do you think that that's the case or do you think they're like purposely trying to uh, redirect us or throw us off of Wanda being the cause and there's other forces at play? No, nah, I think it's just Wanda. You really think? Oh, just yeah, Wanda? I think I think I think it's just definitely Wanda. Yeah, for sure. I think she's going to be revealed as the big villain. If You're I gonna feel sorry for her because, mm-hmm. you, like, the way the the way they're going to portray her, portray her on this TV show is just lovable, sweet. But we never we know for a fact that that's not what it is. So so all right. Well, let me let me ask you this because we are recording on Monday. Yeah. And I think the promo for episodes five and six came out. Um, I I did watch it. Did you watch it? Hell no. Why would okay. you do that? Because it just looked you cool. You already know so much. Here's the thing. You have so much inside information right now as it, far as comic book sure. wise. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Right. I know I know where you're going with that, but here's the thing. But nobody else does. As much as I kind of know the Scarlet Witch and Wand or the Scarlet Witch and Vision story, that trailer, um, that promo was nothing what I thought it was going. Oh. Matter of fact. Is it the Halloween and, and, one? The uh, one where I think of? I think so. Okay. The only thing I'm I'm gonna say is white light. And if that doesn't trigger, okay. Nope. And I'm not Is gonna that like mayonnaise reference. Yeah. And you know what? Because I'm not gonna ruin it for you, I won't even mention it for the listeners. You know, if you want to go watch the episode because five, and six, yeah, yeah, yeah. four, oh yeah, five and six promo, you can. If not, no worries. I'll try to not, you know, reference it. But what what are your thoughts? 
um, that I have been seeing a lot in, in regards to episode four, where people are are hinting or theorizing that maybe maybe there is another force at play that's controlling Wanda. And a lot of people are saying like maybe either AIM or or I think Hive is the name of the other okay. uh, organization, but only because like the beekeeper kind of um uh, look, you know, a lot of people have been asking why did he turn into a beekeeper of all things? Oh, that'd be cool. Why is there all this reference to the hexagons and things like that, which is I think AIM's logo. Um, It's either AIM or, or Damn, the other one. Give me that. <laughs> that's that'd be them. cool. That'd be cool if you can give me that. <laughs> okay. If they bring AIM. But, but you just said that you think it's all Wanda, there. right? Yeah, it's Wanda that's basically manifesting everything. But do you think she's? I mean, do you do you think it's possible that she could be? Uh, do you think it's possible that she could be controlled, no. or she's being controlled? No, sorry. I think for a fact, no. I hmm. think for a fact that it's all her because then at some point that creates more of her like being on the run. Yeah, I would be very surprised. Actually, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. I I, I want to say I'd be very surprised if they if Wanda comes out of this kind of being. Um, viewed in a different light, like a less positive light, you know, and that's part of her character arc. Because, I mean, that would that would mirror, like, the comic book, right? Like, after she does House of M, um, and that was, what, 2006, 2005, 2006, even up to this point now, in the comic book, she's still, like, dealing with that. Like, people still bring it up. Um, the X-Men still don't really trust her or whatnot. So I wonder if they will try to uh, mimic that characterization in the show, where at by the end of this, she's done something... And maybe your point's right, where maybe she it's all her. The blame is all on her. And going forward, she's got to kind of redeem herself, you know, or she's not looked at in the same vein. Because I was thinking, like, man, what what is Monica and Wanda's um, relationship going to be like after this? Because, I mean, you just blew me out of, you know, like, yo, you just blasted me out of this town, you know? Like, you could have easily killed me. I wonder what their relationship going forward is going to be like. I wonder if she even, I wonder if, if in some way, this is uh they use this as like the origin of her powers like for some reason wanda's uh power being hit by wanda's powers i don't know awakened something or or gave her powers yeah, yeah. i mean that's a that's a complete reach definitely i i know i sound crazy saying it but eh. well yeah. that, like, here's the thing we still don't understand how wanda's powers are working so hopefully that'll be something that they'll answer and we'll get some definite um Ooh. clarification on no yeah how about we we discuss like some things that this episode did answer? Like w- when when you think about episode four, what what are some plot points and questions that they did answer in this episode that you might have had watching the first three? Who is behind the radio? Okay, which we found out was Jimmy Jimmy Woo. Jimmy Woo, and how are, is everybody perceiving it on the other side? Mm. Because there's a reality inside the bubble, and then there's outside the bubble. Yeah. So I love the fact that where the guy is basically like. Yo, is this in real time? Is this happening right now? Is this mm-hmm. is this already happened and we're watching it? Like, what is going on? I'm like, and the girl, and the, I love the fact that the girl's like, yo, you guys don't know shit as much as I know shit. So it's cool as a as a watcher mm. or like you know the listener or whatever to see that like the yeah, like people. Jimmy, like Agent Wu and um, Darcy are kind of like metaphors for the uh, the audience because they're asking yeah. a lot of questions that I think everyone's been asking. It's the same thing, like you know. So it, that was kind of like a cool. That episode was cool on a lot of levels, man. Just like storytelling and like plot revealing and like that kind of justification, but also like you know some of the metaphors and things that they were playing with. Yeah, you know, the first three episodes you were <laughs> kind of like laying down. The fourth episode made you sit up. Yes, Na- like you're absolutely. Up right now and absolutely. Like, oh, this okay. is not one that you can just like. Yeah, you laying down. For yeah, me. yeah, exactly. Yeah, like you're yeah, not texting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, baby, listen, babe. Yeah. I can't talk to you right now. Some shit just happened. Agent Wu, all this, he write ends up writing questions on that you know uh, whiteboard, why and a lot of them, yeah, you know, why the hex is why um uh, is this real? Uh, why sitcom? Same timeline. And I was like, yo, that's a lot of questions you'll find on YouTube that people are or, and Google people are like um um searching or whatnot. So, and one other thing I'll add too is. We finally got, you know, the the identity of the beekeeper. Uh, we found out how um, how Monica got involved with it, and and we find out why the neighbors were so like kind of sketchy or quiet about her. You know, when they were like, she doesn't belong here. Like, no, we found out like, like, okay, what do you mean exactly? <laughs> what type of yeah, neighborhood is this? <laughs> yeah, what do you mean she doesn't belong here? Yeah. Oh, and then uh, we found out about the drone. They answered like. That helicopter, helicopter that she finds was the drone. It's like, huh, this was a very, um, I will say at oh, times it felt detective. very, conv- exactly. It was like 
sometimes it felt too convenient where it was like, oh, they got answers for everything. Okay. It's almost like, yeah, you know, when you were like, when you had all the answers to like, you know, like your mom and she was like, all right, Mrs. Smartass. <laughs> you know? It was like a backhanded compliment. Yeah. Like this episode sometimes is like so convenient. You're like, God damn. Like, yeah, all right. I, I'm not stupid. Like, you don't got to like tell me all this. Do you know like a lot? Do you know a lot of people watching it? Because I, I will personally now I say, do because I won't shut up about it. Oh, huh, okay. I, I will personally say this is. I thought more people will be talking about it, but it really f- in my circle is just like my nerdy friends, like okay. my like my non like nerd friends or my family are not watching it either. And I'm like, this is an MCU. Is your dad watching it? No, I don't think so. OG mom and pop is not. Sorry, <laughs> that didn't even make any sense. No, I was like, wait, OG mom and pop. <laughs> Yo, OG mm-hmm. Marvel, Marvel OG. Is not watching. No, but I think it's primarily because he. I haven't given them the, my Disney Plus password, and okay. I'm and I feel like I'm on record right now saying I'm not a good son. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Sometimes you got to keep the password close to you, and you got to like basically like all right, like yeah, they got to give to every family member. Yeah, he didn't finish trial number eight of twelve. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, you got to finish twelve trials, Hercules. Um, all right, well, here's my last question for you, and then we can wrap up. All right, man, because I wanted this to be like just a quick convo. Uh, but yeah, it's 45 been like a, minutes later. It's been a fun... Well, I feel like Wanda, that Dude, that's the type of show WandaVision is. It's a show that you talk about. It's going to generate a lot of... so much weird shit is happening. Yeah. What, what were you going to say? No, it's definitely going to generate a conversation between people. For sure. For sure. I feel like there's enough nuances and, you know, uh, uh, just like weird stuff to like talk about, you know? And, and because this is almost kind of like Marvel's version of like... It feels like their attempt at a thriller... Uh-huh. type of show um those shows are always something that you know i found like people would just talk about because there's so much plot holes and mysteries and you know do you still have any like questions and do you have like any best guesses for the next episode of the rest of the season most definitely the question's like yo Get what's it, gonna yeah. happen with these kids and oh, the best guess is that these is kids are gonna be the, <laughs> yo what's no, gonna happen question. to these two kids like yeah, yo yeah. billy and tommy me and you are like because of the fact that we've been reading marvel for a bit and we know where they can go. Yo, they have potential to go so much. Oh, man. So much. That's right. This show can open up, a, which I mean, yo, it, it already is. It's like, yo, this leads into Doctor Strange. And then this is going to have impacts into Spider Man 3, which might explain why it feels like every week I get a, a, a I see a headline where it's like, so and so is going to be in Spider Man 3. And I'm like, yo, how many people are you guys getting? Like, this show is already like launching a bunch of stuff. So, so you're right. Like, there's still so much more material for them to build from. Like, I wonder what else do we get down the line, or wh- what impacts does this show have on other shows down yeah. the line? Um, I would have, dude. I, h- hear me out, and maybe this is because I just read Young Avengers, so I'm still like kind of hype on that. Do you? I feel like I would not be surprised if the next phase or iteration starts tackling or or really setting up sidekicks in the MCU, like a a really legit. Young Avengers slash uh, what would they be called now? Like the champions, right? The no, champions? yeah, champions, Young Avengers. Yeah, like keep in mind, we're getting that Kate Bishop Hawkeye show, and we're getting Kamala Khan. Yep. Um, so th- yo, you would oh, be man. outside the realm. I mean, of we got Spider Man's pretty young. He'd be on the team for yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Who else? There's a bunch. Nah, of I think they def- definitely introduced. That's a lot what I'm of saying, yo. For sure, that's already three. Yo, I think Disney and Marvel has already thought about like, no, we we've already like introduced all these young characters. Now we got to bring him in the first sure. The yeah. only thing I can hope for secretly is Nova. I want oh Sam Alexander, God. bro. If I can have him as Nova, I'd be okay. I'm not. I, I don't. I don't feel like breaking the vibe by checking my phone right now. But I feel like they might have announced Nova, or was that one of them fan? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, I don't try so to look hard. at it, but just, okay. I, yeah. I, sometimes, sometimes like being being a Marvel fan doesn't mean that you have to know everything. Hmm. Sometimes I want to be wild and like, you know, sometimes I like, I want to be a movie goer. Mm-hmm. And I'm only saying this because it's like, like a lot of the Marvel stuff, like I don't try to look yeah. at it. You like kind of ruin, I, like, I, I guess you kind of like ruin the magic when you know, like yeah. me, like when you know, like yo, too much details. That's what I'm saying. Like, yo, I kind of like in the fact that we live in a world right now where the information is just like, just basically streamlined to us. It's like, yeah, I, I kind of don't get to enjoy it as much as I used to when I was like, just dumb, not knowing hmm. or not even dumb, not knowing, just unknowing. Okay. What would you, and, and final and closing remarks, what would you grade this episode and anything else you want to get off your chest about this one? No, this episode was definitely great. Like, I, as far as like, yo, what they're setting up, what they did and how they portrayed, like how they told a story, phenomenal. Like, it was really good. 
I had fun with this episode. Agent Wu was great. Like, I found myself paying attention to a lot of different stuff. Like, I was all for this. It had all the tropes of, like, a classic Marvel introduction movie. Yeah. So now from what, like, yo, here's the thing. Episode four was like, all right, you got a lot of questions? Here's all the questions. We got a lot of answers. Now from everything from here on out is going to be new information. Like now, well said. Yeah. we don't know what's going to yep. go on. We don't know what's going to happen. It's it's like it got everyone up to speed. Like, all right, everyone everyone knows what's going on now. Yep. All right, next up. Here you go. Next get, episode. Get ready for this You one. don't even know what's going to happen. Well said. Yeah. And we're already in color. Scarlet Witch is already showing signs of like, yo, she's turning. At first, in the beginning episode, she's just this lovable, sweet, like, just like, oh my God. Just like you know, the housewife, like, hey, mm-hmm. hey, hey, real animated. By the yeah. by, the end of the third episode, she's throwing bitches out of her fucking house, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, <laughs> oh, like Jazzy Jazz from Bel Air, just throwing. Oh like, my just, god, yo, Uncle Phil, Monica Rambo, Uncle Phil, god. Monica Rambo, the disrespect, and then That's Vision. Mad, Here's the thing. Shout out to Vision being the like the dude that knows what's going on, but he's not gonna fucking cross his woman because he knows for a fact he's what's acting, that gonna yo, be. Yo, he's acting like a, a, a like a dumbfounded Hell husband. Yeah, like, you know, he's shit. like yo, because you can't hey, tell me I'm, you didn't see her flying out the side of the house. Hell no. Vision was like, well, we'll talk about it when she's ready. Yeah. <laughs> yo, you know for a fact. And then he has both of the kids like, hey babe, so what do we do? Let's watch TV. And you're like, and then he did that smile of like, yeah. Yeah, baby. It's so yeah. good. It's on the big screen. Yeah, yeah, big screen. So that's good. Damn, I, 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 I sir, that was, that was, that was, that was probably like a top five yeah. ramble you've had on this Thank show. Thank you so much. That was exactly. I appreciate it. You told um, me to bring it. I brought it. Yeah, you did. Um, I don't think I'm going to follow up behind that because you said a lot of things I said. I will only add that I think this was a smart play in the sense that. If you thought this, these episodes are dragging, um, I think you can't say that going forward because Marvel kind of set the precedence of like, look, we don't do slow stuff. There's a reason for all of it. And I think this is what you'll think about if you should come across another show where you're, or Marvel show where you're like, oh, this is kind of slow. I feel like you might start recalling this one. Like, hey, yo, remember what they did with WandaVision episode four? Like, I think people are going to start paying attention to stuff more. You know, I think they're going to start trying to hone in, especially with this show. I will also say that I think this show has only... We've only seen the tip of the iceberg as far as the crazy stuff that Wanda's probably going to do. Like, I think we've only seen the tip of her power because they made it a point for um, uh, for them to bring up that CMBR, that cosmic microwave background radiation. Ah. And when they were like, yes, uh, the director was like, yes, radiation with the Big Bang. Well, the Big Bang is how the, the Infinity Stones got, you know, created. So... Yo, she's literally got, like, her powers are tied to, like, the well, Infinity Stones, insane. like, the beginning Yo, of time, you know? That's why her and Vision got together, because game recognized <laughs> game. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, she I'm got fed around with that like, reality shit. You know about shit, the Big Bang? The soul shit. Shit. Yeah, for real. I that's what I'm saying. Big Bang. Yo. But, um, but, but that's what I'm saying is, I think we've only seen the tip You're of the iceberg. You're waving your hand like a gun. Yeah, boy, I am throwing hexes <laughs> at you, like, ah, 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 ah. But, yeah, I'm just saying. I think we're going to see her really like power up. By the time with the season zone, I think we're all going to be like, okay, the show showed just how OP Wanda okay. is. Yo, bro, we're four episodes in. This home. is a question I've always been asking you. Does Scarlet Witch deserve happiness still? Yes. All right, cool. I'm I just mean, saying, I, she I, just I, threw I, a chick I, out of her house. So you've just said now. Nah. <laughs> well, yeah, she brought up her dead brother and Ultron. I mean, in the moment. Bro, here's the thing. You brought up my dead brother? I'm throwing you out that. Come on. So, I mean, yo, uh, you want me to judge you? Justify. Justify. I, do? Justify. I say ask me that when the season ends. All right. All right. Well, look, uh, listeners, we uh, that is the end of our little quick strike show, man. Hopefully, you guys um, enjoyed this. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying WandaVision as much as we are. And as always, the conversation doesn't got to end because the show ended or the episode ended. Feel free to send us your thoughts, man. Send us your best guesses, uh, what you think about the show so far. Um, shoot us an email at the at gmail.com. Send us something to read next episode. In the meantime, thank you for listening. Continue to make mine in your short box. Be well. Keep it easy. Drew, stop looking at me like that. Peace. A lot has changed since I've <laughs> sat upon this chair. <laughs> <laughs>